Hello, Facebook fam, and happy Wednesday. So today I'm going to be talking about cravings because we all get them, and I think it's important to know maybe where they're coming from, um, being able to identify that, and talking about what we can do about those cravings. Um, at the end, I'm going to make a couple of recipes as well that are really quick and easy um, to satisfy the most common cravings, which are sweet cravings and salty cravings. So um, if you have any questions as I'm going or if you have any ideas or ways you deal with your cravings, then please pop them in the comments so we can all learn together. And um, I just love to hear what you guys have to say. So yeah, at IIN this past few weeks, we've been talking a lot about cravings. Um, and I know I've definitely had times where I've had certain cravings. And I think it's really interesting to understand where they come from. So, you know, cravings are really just our body's way of telling us that something is out of whack. Something isn't really balanced properly or the way it should be. Um, so there's different reasons for why we get those cravings. So the first um, reason is a lack of primary food. And when I say that, I mean things like the aspects of health that aren't on your plate. So it has nothing to do with actual food. Um, it could be things like relationships, your career, your finances, your um, level of physical activity, things like that. So oftentimes we get cravings if we're um, experience, experiencing maybe um, some dissatisfaction with a relationship in our life. Um, if we are um, experiencing something going wrong with our exercise routine. So maybe too much exercise, not enough exercise, maybe the, not the right kind of activity for our body. Um, it could also be caused by boredom. I know that's one that I used to suffer with. I know when I was a teacher, um, my days at school, like my term days, were so routine and regimented. And then when I'd get to my lovely holidays, it'd be all wonderful and everything, but like literally I was bored. And so I just noticed during those times, I would get strange cravings for things that I knew I didn't need and I didn't normally want, but literally it's because of boredom. Anyways, um, it could also be due to stress, whether that's financial stress, relationship stress, job stress, maybe with a coworker or with a certain project um, happening at work right now. Um, it could also be because of maybe you're feeling some um, feelings of unfulfillment or um, you're not inspired at the current job that you have. And it could also even be from a lack of spiritual practice. So those are all kinds of ways of that primary food affects our cravings. Um, another reason we get cravings has to do with water. So, you know, our brain can um, mistake the feeling of thirst for hunger. So, you know, you hear, oh, I'm hungry. But what your body's actually saying is I'm thirsty. So, you know, studies have shown that if you drink a glass of water, before eating a meal, it actually may reduce the amount you eat because you're not actually maybe that hungry. Um, you're actually craving some water. So that's why just another reason really why staying hydrated throughout the day is really good, um, can reduce those cravings. On the flip side of that, too much water can also create cravings, especially a salty craving, because if your body's got too much water, like you're just a water fiend, you know, sipping water left, right, center, um, or you're exercising a lot and sweating a lot out, then your electrolyte balance could be out. So you could be missing um, a really important mineral like sodium in your body, in which case you may experience those salty cravings. Another reason we get cravings is from um, like emotions and feelings that we're trying to recreate. So Sometimes foods, or a lot of times foods, really can be associated with positive emotions or experiences. And so if we're feeling a bit low or lonely even or sad, then we obviously we want to feel that positivity that we felt, you know, in the past when we ate, say, chocolate cake or homemade pizza or something like that. So our body craves those foods. What it's really looking for, though, is those positive um, experiences and emotions. Um, another thing is that with our childhood foods, so childhood food can be um, um, construed in your mind as very comforting. So I know when I think of foods that I used to eat as a kid, they are total comfort foods. Like, And I know now, like, not the nu most nutrient-dense foods, but at the time, a lot of them, like Kraft Dinner, um, canned tomato soup. Like when I think of that, I'm like, oh, comfort. It's just... just you know, barely tomatoes, a lot of salt, and a lot of sugar. But it was comfort to me. Um, and ice cream was 
something I ate a lot as a kid. So that to me is a real comfort food and I'm not going to give that up. It's, it's a treat food. Um, so, you know, tuning into that may help you to realize why you might be getting some sort of a craving. So it's not really the food, it's the feeling that you're trying to find. Um, another time when we have cravings is during different seasons. So when it's hot and sunny, we might, we crave cooler, more juicy, um, refreshing, lighter foods. And the opposite in the winter, autumn and winter, we're really craving earthy, more um, richer, warming, fattier foods that are going to warm us from the inside out because it's cooler, obviously cooler outside. Um, another reason, God, there's so many, oh, two more. Another reason is, and all the ladies I'm sure will agree with me, is hormones. So when our hormones are out of whack, we get cravings. So oftentimes that time of the month or when you're pregnant or breastfeeding, that's why, you know, you talk to your pregnant friends, you're like, oh, do you want some pickles with peanut butter? Things like that. You probably don't actually want that food, but because of a uh, hormonal imbalance, your body's like, yes, give me pickles, give me peanut butter, um, even better together. And then the last reason I'll just talk about is a lack of nutrients. So this could be a way that your body is telling you that you're missing something in your body. Um, for instance, if your body is low in iron, you might be craving a lot of meat. Even vegans and vegetarians who don't eat, ve or eat meat often or at all or you know, for, um, I'm trying to think of the word, for reasons why they don't want to eat meat, they might start craving it. It's not because they actually want the meat, it's because their body is low in iron. So things you can reach for instead would be lentils and beans, um, nuts and seeds that have iron in them for, that you can get your iron from other than in meat. Um, if you're low in B vitamins, you might have cravings for things like potatoes, bananas, cereals, dairy, eggs. Very, um, when I think of that, I think of very like white bland food, but it could mean that your body is low in B vitamins. And that also can lead to feelings of stress, um, depression, overeating, anxiety. Um, another thing is omega-3. So if you're craving things like cheesy pastries, um, pizzas, things like that, it could mean a lack of omegas in your diet. Um, so things you want to reach for then are, would be postured eggs. So from postured chickens, not um, you know, obviously not caged chickens, but even when it says free range organic, that can mean, yeah, the chickens can move around and they're fed organic feed, but they're not pasture raised. So chickens that feed off of grass and, um, occasional insects in their fields have way higher amounts of omegas threes in their eggs, way better for you. And then there's the whole, you know, we don't want to eat or, um, support chickens who, or I guess farmers <laughs> who are raising their chickens very nicely, but that's a whole other discussion. Um, and then magnesium. So we often get, I hear this all the time, and I even have it too, is chocolate cravings. And, you know, I think it's really common because a lack of magnesium is really common um, because of various reasons, but um, could mean there's too much soda or soft drink in Australia. Um, caffeine or alcohol in your diet and that doesn't allow your body to absorb the magnesium from the foods that you're eating. So if you're craving chocolate, it could mean a magnesium deficiency. Um, and if you want to eat the chocolate, like I want to eat the chocolate all the time. And so, you know, just reach for something that's like 70, at least 70% dark chocolate so that it doesn't have, um, as much sugar or even, um, excess dairy added to it, like milk chocolate not really going to satisfy your magnesium need. Dark chocolate, magnesium, perfect, well done. Um, and then the last nutrient deficiency it could be is um, zinc and calcium if your body is craving really sugary or salty junk foods. So things you might want to up in your diet in that case would be pasture eggs, eggs again, nuts, oysters from zinc. Um, if you eat meat, then dark poultry, liver. And for calcium, things like... Um, Atlantic salmon, like wild salmon with the bones in it, has really great calcium, sardines. Um, if you tolerate dairy, then full fat dairy as well. Um, so those are some of the reasons for why we have cravings. Now, um, second thing I want to talk about is ways you can deal with those cravings when they pop up. Um, so I think the first thing I've learned from my health coach training is really just acknowledge the craving. So yes, I have the craving. What does it mean? And I think when we kind of put a food into that um, off limits category, we 
wanted more. Like I know for me, if I say, okay, I'm not going to have that, then I'm going to become obsessed with not eating it, which still means it's at the forefront of my mind and I'm thinking about it all the time and I don't want to live like that. There's no point. So acknowledge it, maybe fulfill that craving. Um, it might just be more productive and then move on. Um, you can also explore the reasons for having that craving in a really non-judgmental way. Just like get really curious with yourself, you know, ask like what's happening when I have this craving? Am I experiencing certain emotions or um, a physical feeling at the time? So, you know, food isn't the answer. It's really just masking the symptoms of what you're feeling. Oh, hi, Anaya. Anaya. Oh, that's okay. Bye, Anaya. I'll <laughs> talk to you soon. Um, thanks for your support. And yeah, so when we're eating, craving those foods, um, yeah, it's just masking the symptoms. So when you're feeling stressed or fatigued, lonely, even bored, um, you are more up to make poor dietary decisions. So things you can do, like if you're feeling tired or um, a bit stressed, go outside, get in the sunshine. If you've got a dog, take them for a walk. If you've got a kid, put in the pram, go for a walk. Um, even just jump around and get your energy going. Oftentimes we crave sweet things when we are really just craving energy, and energy creates energy. So if you want to go crazy and jump around and, you know, go like this in your house and get your blood flowing, then you know you might find that your craving actually disappears because what you wanted was energy, not sugar. Um, and then also, you know, look at your sleep patterns. Are there things that are prohibiting your sleep? Things that maybe are causing you to not get the full amount or even a good quality sleep um, that you obviously need. And that's something as a health coach that I can help you with if you have questions and want to explore that more. Um, the other thing is call a friend, have a chat. You know, maybe you're just lonely at home or even at your at work, work can be lonely even if you're surrounded by lots of people, it can still be lonely, so go chat with someone and craving might go away. Um, the other thing is habits. So sometimes we just get into the habit of having something at a certain time of day. I definitely had this. Um, I just got into this habit of having a coffee around 3, 3.30. I was really probably just tired um, and needed to go for a walk and up my energy. But what I was reaching for was coffee and it literally just got into a habit. Like 3, 3.30 would roll around. I'd be like, oh, coffee time. I didn't actually need it. I didn't even sometimes want it. I would literally just have it though and think, what am I doing? Like I don't need this. So you could, if that's happening to you, you could always just um, substitute for something else. So one thing I did was I started to have a turmeric latte or a matcha latte at that time because what I was really craving was – like the ritual and the, um, I found it like really calming to have a warm beverage at that time. Um, or if I took Hendrix for a walk, I don't know. I just like the idea of having a coffee. So I would just change it to something that was actually going to, um, up my health really than something like coffee that I didn't need in the afternoon. That's probably going to hinder my sleep as well. And then, oh my God. So last thing is, Ask yourself, is this craving for a really a highly palatable food? And what I mean by that is foods that are designed to be craved. So processed foods, and I just find this is like, it's actually crazy, it's overwhelming, but like processed foods like, you know, pizzas or, or hamburgers from fast food places or um, ice creams and soft drinks, they are literally designed by um, food engineers and flavor specialists and statisticians and researchers over, you know, many years to mathematically appeal to the most amount of people. So these foods have something called a bliss point, which is the perfect combination of salty, sweet, and fat. And we eat that and literally our brain just goes ding, like I want more. So the reward center in your brain is um, being lit up. And when that happens, you just want more. And so you know, that's why people experience addictions to these foods. It's not a lack of willpower at all. It's really biological. So like those foods, I guess the, really the best way to not experience those cravings is to really avoid them as much as possible because the more you have, the more you're going to want. Um, so I guess that's all the info I kind of had for you. And I'm just going to make two really easy recipes. So the first one is, um, is a chocolate avocado mousse. So if you're someone who really loves a chocolatey um, treat every now and then, or if you're craving something sweet, this could be a great alternative for you. It's full of really healthy fats, um, and fats are going to satiate that craving as well. So 
let's see, what do I have here? I wish I could move this a little bit so you can see, but anyways, I'll, I'll just hold it all up. So does anyone else get really excited by a good avocado? Like I open this and I'm just like, whoa, I feel like light is shining down. It's gorgeous. Anyways, so two avocados and they just get scooped into, I use a Nutribullet all the time. So this thing is like my best friend. Um, I feel like I can make anything in it. So I'm just going to scoop that into the big container. Has anyone made this before? I'd love to know in the comments if you've made chocolate avocado mousse before, if you have favorite flavorings you use. I was thinking I could add some peppermint essential oil to it. Chocolate mint. Mm, I don't know if I'm really on that right now though. But you could. Uh, maybe even orange, wild orange um, essential oil. So I've got the avocado in here. Then I'm just going to add a quarter cup of raw cacao, so high in magnesium. Um, it's not processed. There's no sugar like cocoa can have, so you want raw cacao. Um, a dash of vanilla. This is the best vanilla in the world. My grandma gets it for me in the Dominican Republic, and then she ships it over. So if you want some, let me know. I'll ask her. She's probably going to watch this, so thanks, Grandma, for my vanilla. I love it. Um, for some sweetness, I'm going to add some rice malt syrup. You could add honey or maple as well. I kind of tend to use all three, but today I'm using rice malt, a couple teaspoons, not too much. Um, and then some chia seeds. I'm going to add two tablespoons. So these are full of really great omegas, omega-3. And they're, you know, in terms of texture, they're going to help to, um, to, what's the word, make it creamier and firmer. Um, and then in my fridge, I've got a half a cup of coconut cream. So I'm just going to put that in. This would be really good to make this weekend, like if you have friends coming over for a dinner party and say, oh, no, we've got chocolate mousse. And then once they finished it and said, oh, that was delicious, you can be like, it was actually avocado. <laughs> so sneaky. Oh, and a pinch of salt. I forgot a pinch of salt. Very important to balance the chocolate flavors. By the way, salt. My husband and I were up for a walk this morning and I, I said something like, oh, just take it with a grain of salt. And then we were like, where does that saying even come from? Grain of, take it with a grain of salt. Anyone know what it means? I have no idea. If you do, I'd love to know. All right, and then this is gonna be really loud. Sorry, it's right beside the computer. I'm kind of scared. to be able to open this up. So I need to go to the gym more and get my muscles bigger. And then just scrape it down. Oh my God, I just want to eat it. I can't wait. Mm. And then blend it up again. And once it's all blended, you just scoop it into, like if you're having people over, um, and you want to do it for a dinner party with maybe some um, berries, frozen berries and whipped coconut cream would be really good or flaked coconut. So if you're going to serve it like that, you could scoop it into some nice glasses or even pipe it into some nice glasses. Otherwise, just put it in a container and put it in the fridge, which is what I'm going to do. Oh my god, I can't get it open now. I really want to show you how creamy it is. Okay, I'll come back to it. Maybe it'll loosen this up. Where's my husband? He's not here. Okay, next recipe. We'll leave that for a little while. Um, so next recipe is if you have salty cravings. So I'm going to use some just roasted nuts, plain roasted nuts. The um, if you want to get like you know salty flavored nuts from the shops, they can be so full of sugar actually and a heap of salt and preservatives and flavors that you don't really need to eat or you want to eat and so this way of making your own is so easy and you know exactly what's going in it and um it's all good good stuff so what i'm first gonna do is just i've got one egg white in this bowl and i'm just gonna whip it another one of my favorite kitchen gadgets is this little thing it whips eggs like so quickly
All right, done. Um, and then just into that, you could just mix in some spices. So in here I've got cumin. We're going to remember now. Cumin and coriander, which I never really use separately. I feel like they're like brother and sister. They just go together all the time. Um, what do I have? And chili, turmeric, garlic powder, and some salt. So I'm just going to mix that into my egg white. Let's do that out. You better pay my angles, don't I? Anyway, super easy, and then throw the whoops in, put them around, stir them around. Oh my god, these are gonna be so tasty. Mmm, I can already smell it. Mmm, kind of like a Middle Eastern spice mix that I made up. Um, and then all you do is put them on a tray. And I've got my oven preheated to 150, so not too, too hot. And then I'm just going to pop them in the oven for probably about 10, 15 minutes. So let's keep an eye on them. Then mix them up a bit and then pop them back in for a few minutes to make sure that all the sides are crispy. And then just put them in, I don't know, a container and snack on them when you have a salty craving. Rather than reaching for... I just realized I thought my, my pants are kind of low. Um, rather than reaching for, you know, some, um, I don't know, already seasoned nuts you get from the shops or some potato chips or, I don't know, whatever you might want if you have salty cravings. I just like these, so that's what I eat. And again, full of healthy fats that are really going to help satiate those cravings. So I hope you've learned something. Um, if you want those recipes, I can just message me and I'll just send them to you um, in a message. And what else do I want to say? I think that's about it. So thanks for tuning in. And again, if you have any questions, um, you want to know anything else, just let me know. And remember to follow me on Instagram, Nutrition Mission Mummy, for lots more tips and healthy recipes and pictures and pictures of my little mini Hendrix because he's cute. And have a great day. See ya.